So we, we started this YouTube channel, uh, the Hot Air Balloonatics, and this, uh, the idea for it came on a road trip when we were taking two balloons to go get uh, go get some annual inspections done. So uh, we were on the road, and as most of our great ideas come, we were kind of tra- chatting and just popped into our heads. So uh, what do you yeah. think about the name, first of all? Well, I think it's uh, it's pretty fitting um, <laughs> in that uh, you got two balloonists that have been friends for years and have uh, done many things outside of ballooning. Um a lot of stuff we can talk about. Some stuff that will stay in the vault forever, hopefully. <laughs> Some stuff we can. That's but, right. Uh, but, uh, but from the ballooning aspect, it's sort of our paths are coming back together again. And um, uh, it, it's it's just it's nice to be able to do this and enjoy this next uh, next adventure that we're going to go into. Yeah. Well, let, let's go back to kind of where it all started a little bit. Back in the 80s, you and I had been... You know, I guess we had ridden the rescue squads together and uh, got in the fire departments. And uh, how did you get started in this ballooning thing? How did that start? Well, I um, I took a ride at the Richmond Airport. They had a balloon festival there in 86 and 87 at the Richmond Airport. And uh, in 87, I took a balloon ride as a passenger and uh, sort of fell in love with that aspect of flying. And back then, I always wanted to do something in aviation, whether it was fly planes or helicopters, but had never been exposed to a hot air balloon. And then after the flight, I uh, found out that there was a local person in the Hanover Airport area, uh, Steve Hoffman, and uh, went up there and talked with him. And he said, well, come and crew. And went up there and crewed for a couple of flights. And he said, well, why don't you uh, work on getting your license? And I uh, said, in order to get your license, you need to have a balloon. And by the way, I can sell you a balloon too. So I, uh, Got the price of the balloon, and then I came to you and another <laughs> firefighter, and the three of us uh, decided, hey, why not? We were young and something neat to do, and it was a reasonable price with three of us doing it, and the three of us bought a balloon, and uh, it was ironic. That balloon that we bought um, new from Steve Hoffman was an Eagle balloon uh, in 88. Uh, we named it Fire 3 yeah. for the, uh, the three firefighters that uh, had purchased that balloon. And that that balloon is long since uh, given up the ghost because uh, it's shoot that's forty year old balloon they don't last that long and we no. we used it pretty well the early years so yep we did the basket's still around it's in uh, it's been rebuilt by yep. uh, Bert Padell up in Pennsylvania um, and it's still around and um, a showpiece for somebody yeah so uh, that's kind of how you got me into it it was uh, one of these hey let's go crew for this guy on a balloon tether one day and. Did the tether and said, "This is this is fun. This is cool. Let's. Uh, the, what do we need to do next?" And you went, "Let's buy one." And I said, "Okay." So the next day, without even having taken a real flight, I think uh, I think we were committed to buying a balloon. And uh, from there, we went on to get our private and then commercial pilot's license. And uh, you've been flying ever since. I stepped away for a few years, but uh, got back into it here this this past summer. And uh, looking forward to whatever comes next, man. It's uh, it's been a blast. So. Well, we started this, uh, you know, we kind of maybe thankfully or, or maybe it's a bad thing that uh, when we started ballooning, there wasn't as much of a social media presence. There wasn't a YouTube, there wasn't Facebook and all that. So uh, when I got back into this and having done some podcasts, I thought it'd be kind of cool to capture some of these videos and uh, record them and maybe share them and get, get other people in, interested in it and enjoying the sport. So uh, we've been doing that uh, for, I don't know, a couple months now, and I've gotten we've gotten three videos out where you and I have been flying, or we did some uh, flying at um, at a winery up near Tappahannock a, a month or two ago, and that's captured. And uh, here the other day we took uh, – I was the ground crew, and you flew um, Daniel and Maria, uh, a couple on there. Kind of, it was their weekend, birthday weekend for both of them, and it was a pretty special flight. But uh, that balloon's pretty interesting. I, that's kind of the purpose of kind of recording this preamble to that video is to talk a little bit about that – balloon and where 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 it came from and the banner that's on on the back of it so uh talk a little bit about that that football balloon if you would is that is that really a special shape or is that just a, a, a special artwork yeah it i really wouldn't put it in the special shape category um but we refer to it as the american football and it's a, a racer design uh Lindstrand and cameron and many of the other manufacturers make those racer designs but um in theory they look like a football compared to a, a pear-shaped regular um, shaped balloon. Uh, so I'd had the balloon for years, bought it back in 2008 when I was really on the circuit competing and so forth. And then um, it also had the area on a banner for the back uh, of the balloon. And uh, unfortunately, um, 
happened uh, in October of 18. Uh, here in the Richmond area, we had a tragic accident on the interstate where one of the uh, neighboring fire jurisdictions, uh, Hanover Fire, lost uh, the life of a lieutenant, uh, Lieutenant Brad Clark. And then two other firefighters were seriously injured in that same incident. Um, and uh, it was, you know, after that, that I had decided and worked with the family uh, of Brad Clark to um, wanted to create a banner in his memory and also to carry that message of moving over for the, uh, the not only Brad, but for the, the many public safety workers that are on the interstate every day uh, and also the service workers that are there, um, towing services and just general road work. Um, so we created that banner and that message has been uh, moved across the whole United States uh, for many years. Uh, it was in place uh, prior to that in many states. Um, and uh, so I was fortunate to um, uh, to be able to offer that platform to continue or get that message out and actually put the banner on in July of 19. So a little over six months later, I put the banner on the balloon and I have flown that banner on uh, a couple of different events throughout the United States. And whenever I get the chance to fly it, um, here in the Richmond area, I'll fly it. And any events that um, would like to do something with it, uh, you know, I'm always happy to uh, to try to make that work out. Yeah, I thought it was pretty cool too. The uh, the other day when we flew out of um, the tap house near the airport, air park, um, you basically flew right over the interchange of Atlee Station and across the interstate. So uh, all those travelers coming up and down 95 got the message, hopefully, and mm -hmm. hopefully they'll heed it. So it is it is unfortunate that um, you've got to let, lose the life of a, a fellow firefighter before a tragic incident like that that got the state's General Assembly. And I know Brad's uh, mom and dad were instrumental in, in lobbying the General Assembly to get this, the Virginia law changed to require people to move over uh, on the interstates. And... Um, now, like you said, now that's a that's a, a regulation in all fifty states. So it's not just a Virginia thing; it's a, it's across the country. So it's good you're out there spreading that message. Yeah, in in addition to Brad's wife too, uh, um, Brad's wife. She too. and that family have um, you know been through a lot, but they are are uh, moving forward. Have made uh, big strides in uh, changing not only the laws but also just the awareness that's out there. And uh, you know, we'll never know how many lives have been changed or have saved because of people doing the right thing um but we'll, we'll continue to to get that message out because you know you don't have to turn far but every day there's some type of tragic tragic on the interstate that's involving like i said public safety um doing their job or the road workers or you know just the mom and dad that are changing the tires on the side of the road you know, give them the same amount of uh, space that you give anybody else yeah that's why probably one of the more dangerous things I think we've ever done is uh, is work in that environment on the interstate. You know, we've been in burning buildings and buildings that were ready to flash over and collapse around us. But uh, really, the only time I think I've been really scared was as that traffic zipping by at 60, 70, 80 miles an hour. So it's, it is kind of concerning. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, that, that football is not the only balloon you fly that banner on uh, and that not the only message that you've been kind of taking up for this ballooning um initiative is you've got tiny the the fire dog too now we'll, we can talk about him uh maybe in another uh video cast on youtube and maybe have some video of him we're going out to lake havasu new mexico here in a few weeks and uh tiny's going to be flying out there we'll get some video and vid footage of him and put that out maybe get together and talk about him a little bit more maybe hopefully we'll do that one in person because uh now i'm down here at the southern command for the holidays and yep. you're still back home so um I thought it was pretty cool too. The uh, the other night when when we were flying, you kind of got on the radio to me and said, "Hey, go to this neighborhood, go to this house, and look for Bobby Clark." And it was uh, Brad's father's neighborhood, and we were basically flying right over his neighborhood. And in the video you're about to see, you'll see a, 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 a short clip where the balloon is flying over a neighborhood in a house, and I was standing there with Bobby Clark as that balloon was flying over, chatting with him and catching up because he's a he's a retired Henrico firefighter as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I spent many of uh, many of days and times and calls with Bob Clark as a he was a battalion chief when he retired, but um, and then obviously been remained friends, and then especially after Brad's incident, we incident we've uh, remained close. But um, I've got Brad pinned on my map that I fly with, so anytime I'm flying that direction, I always give him a call and tell him I'm heading that way. And uh, he's an avid photographer, so he loves to get out and take videos and pictures and. So it's just ironic that he was outside and was able to see us fly by, and then you were able to stop and chat with him. And 
Um, we always send pictures back and forth after the flight. He'll send pictures of the balloon that he's taken as we have flown by, and then I'll send pictures of his neighborhood. Mm. And he can always see the advancement of the development that's going on around there. But yeah, true. Um, but yes, we um, I've been fortunate that the, the fire service and the ballooning have come together um, in so many ways. And, and just, uh, you know, it's just, I feel like it's just a... a it's the thing to do, and that's to carry any public safety message out there. And I've, I've done it throughout the years with different banners, and now I've got this special shape. And um, as I had designed the balloon, it was to put some logo on the back, and we'll talk further about that. But yeah. we still carry that move over message on that. Yep. Yeah. Well, we'll talk about that one later. But uh, in the meantime, we've been chatting here for a few minutes and got the video coming up. And uh, thanks for uh, thanks for letting me share these. Thanks for catching up today. And uh, we'll I'll soon be back in Richmond. We'll go fly some more and. Uh, uh, officially, uh, you're not buying a new balloon. I'm going to put that one out there for the That's record right. to, to make sure that the, the message gets delivered that uh, yeah, Henry is yeah. not buying another balloon, even yeah. though we might be going to pick one up here in a couple of weeks. Yeah, I'm part of it, but we're uh, not buying it. <laughs> That's so, right. That's right. So that know, message was that message is aimed at somebody, but uh, no surprises when you get home. Yeah, we'll have to um, record that whole trip. We're making a, a speed run to Texas. <laughs> oh, well. To pick well, up a balloon. <laughs> a balloon. Yeah, we're going to pick yeah, up like a balloon in Texas. Like something different to Texas and back, right? <laughs> That's right. So. All right. All right. Oh, the stories we could tell. All right, brother. Well, right. Uh, be well. Uh, have a good weekend, and uh, I'll see you when I get back. All right. Thanks, Robbie. Hey, Use that to when we're setting up to land.